everyone, it's Mari. I'm back again today for more sampler inspiration for a Sampler Saturday. I'm going to be working with the amazing May sampler today. And the theme for this month's sampler is Friends, working with some amazing products from American Crafts, the Jen Hadfield Reaching Out Collection, a custom traveler's notebook made with rainbow and blossoms, and the Simple Story Safe Travels Collection. And we also received a Heidi Swap stamp set, and I'm going to be working with that on both of the projects that I'm going to be sharing today. So I've just got the sampler content spread out on my desk here. I'm just showing you all of the products that you get for as low as $14 a month with a subscription. This is just such a great value and I always have so much fun opening this little packet of goodies and just taking a look at all of the different ways that I can use these products on all kinds of different projects. So here I'm just showing you all of the pattern paper. This is just from the one collection. You get a whole set of, or I got a set of sentiment stickers and look at this stamp set, just gorgeous. I absolutely had so much fun working with this on both of the projects today, stamping out a bunch of different um, stamps from this stamp set. And this is the custom traveler's notebook. So gorgeous. And I, I am going to be doing a traveler's notebook book spread today for you showing you one way that you can use your products in your traveler's notebook and there's so many pages in this little book and the cover is so sweet I absolutely adore it so this is again the friends themed sampler for May and I'm going to take you through the process for my two projects starting now. So we're going to start off with the Traveler's Notebook project and I wanted to decorate the cover of my notebook to begin with. I received this dimensional sticker that I showed you there as well as this sticker sheet from the uh, Reaching Out collection. I'm going to use that dimensional sticker and this phrase sticker that says together to decorate the front of my notebook. And this notebook is primarily going to be used to document our family's journey through building a cabin, a cottage together at the lake. We actually spent this past weekend there and I did of course take quite a few photographs and I am going to use three of those photos on my double page spread today for this project. Now I'm going to pop up the phrase together on some 3L foam adhesive and adhere that to my cover and then I'm going to put that dimensional sticker above the word together and I just think this is a really great theme for my notebook because this is a project that my family is working on together. We're all going up there and working on clearing the lot and um, removing the, the trees that have been chopped down and all that kind of stuff. It's going to be a ton of work from clearing the lot to building the cottage and the, and the garage and all of the different bits that will go along with this project. It is going to take us several years and I know that I'm not going to have any trouble filling up this notebook and many more little albums documenting our journey. So I'm just really thrilled with this notebook and the opportunity to use it to document this story. Now I'm going to create an eye line at the bottom of the double page spread and one way that you can create an eye line on two pages going across is to create a line at the bottom of your page and I I'm going to achieve that by cutting two strips that are equal width and adhering them across from each other across the double page spread, leaving of course the split where the gutter or the, the page folds or the book folds in half. And you'll just see me here taking this beautiful kind of a foliage print. It's the one with the little houses on the back. And I'm going to cut these and like I said, just use those for my eye line. I am going to fishtail or create a banner out of both of these pieces as well. And I'm also going to add a little bit of machine stitching to these papers also just to give them a bit more texture. So you can see how this is going to go here. Just I'm going to show you the placement of the papers at the bottom of the page and kind of what I was going for here and the method to my madness, so to speak. So the nice thing about creating an eye line is that it just draws your eye across the double page spread and I always find this is really important when you're working on a project where you want to achieve that where you've got more than one page that's that are going to be sort of like a cohesive unit in a book. So here you can just see I've got my two strips cut down and this is what I'm going to do to create a banner. I'm going to try to hold on to that paper <laughs> and then I'm just going to take my scissors I folded it in half at the bottom and now I'll just cut an angle cut 
like in a V shape kind of. And there you can just see that creates a nice fishtail or a banner end. And I'm going to actually move that up on the page a little bit and you, you won't see that just immediately here. But once I get both of my little strips here fishtailed, I am going to push them up on the page a little bit and just leave a little bit of white space below them. I just thought that was really pleasing to the eye to make sure that there's a little bit of white space underneath these banners on my page. Now I am going to use the one that's already finished just to measure the other one to make sure that I get them the same length. And so you'll just see me making a little pencil mark there using the other banner to help me out. I am going to just trim this paper off and then I will fishtail the end of this one as well. Just using my Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer here to trim that paper off and I will go ahead and make that cut on the end of this paper as well to create that banner end. So super easy, really love this technique just to create a little bit of detail on the project. It just adds a little bit of extra at the bottom. I think it just looks really cool and I had a lot of fun making these little banners for sure. So the great thing about the sampler is you have a ton of pattern paper to choose from with all of the six by six papers from reaching out and from safe travels from simple stories. You've got lots of options. So if you wanted to use your traveler's notebook for a travel theme this month, you definitely could do that using the safe travels collection, of course, as well, because there's lots of little icons and ephemera that would work for that as well. So there you can just see those two pieces. I've added a little bit of machine stitching, like I mentioned earlier, just with some white thread. And I'm going to adhere those down to the notebook pages on just on three sides with some double-sided adhesive. This is some Lawn Fawn quarter inch double-sided adhesive. And you'll just see me here only using it on that straight side, the bottom, and then the banner edged side in a straight line. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually create a little pocket in that way. So I thought that it would be interesting to sort of create a dual purpose with these banners. Not only are they going to be the eye line and decorative on the bottom of your page, but they'll also serve as little pockets where you can store some little hidden bits on your page, or you could even use them for bits that you tuck in there that are visible. On the rest of the page. So it's just a little bit of an idea here for some interactivity, an interactive element that you can use on your project. I really do like using the double-sided adhesive for these types of pockets just because it is super, super strong and it will stay put. So I'm just using my craft pick there to take the release paper off the back of that double-sided tape. And now I am going to attempt to get this onto the notebook straight. So always a little bit of an issue in my world getting things straight so I'm going to painstakingly take my time to make sure that I get that down properly and the thing is with this double-sided adhesive once you do push that in and it's burnished down and stuck to the paper that is not coming off so if it's crooked it will be crooked there you can just see that fun little pocket there which I really love and now I'm going to use one of the stickers that was on my sticker sheet. This one says hashtag better together, perfect for what I'm journaling about and the photos that I am sharing here on this project. Now I'm going to start using that stamp set, which is so lovely and so fun for this kind of a project for sure. I'm going to use my Versifying Claire ink in Nocturne. This is a really nice crisp ink for stamping out anything that has a sentiment or anything like this. Now I did want to just stamp on some scrap to make sure that this was going to stamp nicely with my block. And so here you'll just see that I have inked up my stamp again. I'm going to be brave and go to my paper and just take my time making sure it's straight and then I will go ahead and press that down. Now the great thing about a clear stamp is it's a whole lot easier to get it straight um, when you're stamping with a block than for example, a red rubber stamp, so not too bad at all. Now I'm kind of working on placement of my photos and so I'm thinking I'm gonna put that photo right about where it is on the page right now. That's a two by two photo. And I wanna go in and stamp out some more of the stamps from that Heidi Swap stamp set. So this one says status update. And of course I'm gonna do tons of journaling on this page as well. Now I wanted to blend on some faded jeans distress oxide ink Adding ink to your pages is a really great way to add some color. So it's a really great way to add color and interest and make your pages just look 
like they're more complete. There's more detail there. So I'm just going to take my ink blending tool and add a little bit of that ink. Once I put the photo back onto the area, I can see how much more ink I need to add. Once I'm finished with adding the ink, I'll take my Distress Spray tool there. I'm just showing you. I added a little bit of water over top of the ink with that spritzer. And now I'm just taking the paper towel to dab up the extra moisture. Now I'm going to use one of the pattern papers to back my photo. And I'm actually going to use three photos on this layout and I'll back each of the three photos with a different six by six pattern paper. I want to use my paper distressing tool to distress the paper as well, just to make it look a little bit more textured and just to kind of make it stand out a little bit on the, the layout. And you will just see me using my fingers a little bit here to bend up the corners and just kind of, you know, make that edge of the paper a little bit more distressed even than it was with the tool. I'm going to use a little bit of half inch double sided foam adhesive for the back of the photo. I will adhere the photo onto that photo mat with that foam adhesive and just give that more dimension in that way. If you don't like dimension in your traveler's notebooks, you won't want to add foam adhesive to them. Just something to think about when you're putting your projects together. Here you can just see I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the ink on the other side with the two photos and I'm also going to mat them in the same way that I did the first photo. You can also see that I've added some journaling to the left hand side just with my black fine gel pen from uh, Pilot and you could just see here I'm adding that ink and I will spritz that with water just like I did on the other side and now I'm just going to add the photo mats and I just love these papers they're so pretty and I love how the faded jeans just go so nicely with the blues that are in the reaching out collection so gorgeous I really love this dot paper as well so I'm going to use that to mat one of my photos also and these photos are all just documenting the work that we did on the past weekend on the lot you can see all of the trees that were loaded up into the cart and we actually loaded four of those carts on Sunday um, but there were six of us so we were working all day and yeah we just worked really really hard I definitely had some stiff and sore muscles the next day so here you can just see I have the basic placement of my three photos and now I'm just going to that sticker sheet love that sticker sheet it's so fun and I'm going to use some of those here and there on this project so this one says just so totally awesome and I'm going to place that photo with some foam adhesive uh, under the photo of my son there at the back of our lot at the lake there's this little area where we have a picnic table set up and we have chairs and stuff there so that we have a place to rest during the day and to have our lunch and that kind of thing so this is just a photo of him resting there and I am going to write about that in my journaling when I go ahead and do that around this photo so I just want to make sure I have that on there straight so I'm just going to adjust it slightly and I also wanted to use some of the other stickers from the reaching out sticker sheet I'm going to add a gold heart to the corner of that sticker there and I'm liking how that's looking you can just see how the spread is coming together slowly but surely adding all of the little details and there's so many bits in the sampler it's incredible actually I always every time I get my sampler I marvel at all of the things that are packed into that little packet now this is a really fun little embellishment this is one of the die cut pieces from reaching out it says hello it's a little banner of course it's in the same color palette as the rest of that little collection and I just thought that would be a really fun little embellishment for the banner at the bottom and so I'm going to uh, pop that down there again on some foam adhesive and I am going to now do some more stamping so this stamp says did this colon which is perfect for documenting what happened and there's also a three box stamp there that I'm going to use to document that story or that part of the story as well now there's a two by two I got a two by two cut apart on a six by six sheet and I'm going to cut apart this sweet little happy face as an embellishment for the little banner 
area at the bottom on the right side. So you're just going to see me fussy cutting around the edge of that sun circle. And I will pop that up on some foam adhesive as well. I wasn't really sure at first where I wanted to add this. So I do try it in a couple of different areas before I commit to sticking it down at the bottom of the project on that banner. But I just kind of wanted something else on the banner in the banner area on the right side. I'm just going to distress that a little bit to give it a little bit more texture. And there you'll see I have it popped up at the bottom. Now I'm also going to use a little banner die cut piece on that photo at the top. That banner says super on it and I also wanted to add a little heart to that as well. I just like how that just adds a bit more detail and interest and draws your eye to that photo and then of course I'm going to write the story to the right there where it says did this. Now I'm going to use another one of the stamps. This one says don't forget I absolutely love this stamp set so much. It's just so perfect for this type of a project. It's amazing. I love all of Heidi's stamps, of course, but you know, this is just such a fun one that we got in our sampler. I love it. And I love that little house. I thought that was perfect because, you know, this layout is about our building our cottage and the process that is leading up to that so I thought that was perfect and now I'm just using a few more of the little heart stickers from the sticker sheet to go along beside that and just fill in that little white space you know there's so many little ways that you can fill the white space in on your projects where you have like you know it's not great to leave a great big white gap that was in between those two photo elements there so that's a perfect opportunity to grab some of those stickers or one of the stamps or any of the little options that you have uh, in your sampler. Now I'm also going to add a few of the green enamel dots that I got in my sampler around the project as well. It just adds some fun texture and color. And now I'm just looking at the sticker sheet and seeing at this point if there's anything else that I want to use on the project as I'm working on this particular portion or at this stage. And now I've decided that I want to use that rainbow sticker that says smile. That is such a cute sticker. And I am going to pop that up on some foam adhesive and it fits perfectly into that white space area where I've added that journaling where it says status update. So just like I said, filling in those white spaces and making sure that I have sort of like a really compact um, layout here going on and everything just kind of flows together. Now you can see all of the journaling I've added and this double page spread is basically finished. I have documented three photos and a full complete story about a weekend event and I'm so in love with this journal. I love it. It is so good and it is going to be perfect for the process of documenting this journey of ours. So love it. I'm also showing you here how you can just stick some little bits into those little pockets that I made with the banner. I also added a little sentiment from the Simple Stories phrase sticker sheet that I got. It says my piece of paradise beside that little happy face and love it. So, you know, I can stick all kinds of extra little stories and hidden journaling if I want in those little banner pockets. Um, super fun. And I love that interactivity element that I created there. Now, I also wanted to add, I got the little brass or gold rainbow um, clip in my sampler and I love how that is going to help me keep my sampler open to a certain page. I can even just leave it there as an embellishment if I want but it is just a really fun addition and goes along with that little rainbow theme um, that is part of the reaching out collection. There's lots of little rainbows that are part of that collection for sure. So love that and now we're ready to move on to project two. Now I'm going to be working in my storyline chapters uh, binder here. I've had this binder for a while, but I've only done one layout in it. So I definitely want to do more layouts in this binder. It's gorgeous. This is a Heidi Swap binder. Love it. And the binder has these eight and a half by 11 pages, page, um, page fillers in them that you can create your project on, which is genius. And it has a place already for who, what, where, and the date and that kind of thing. And here you can see I've cut a cut file. This cut file is the Let's Go cut file from Just Nick. And I'm gonna use three photos. I have two four by three photos and a two by two photo. And I'm just showing you all of the tons of space that I will have to journal on this eight and a half by 11 page. I'm gonna start off by backing the cut file. And what I do 
to, to do that is I'm going to trace around the outside of the letters with each of the different papers that I want to use. So I'm going to start off here with this paper. I actually end up using the floral side of this paper, but I'm tracing on the dot side. I do use this dot side for another letter in travel, but not for the T. But you will see me just fussy cut out where I traced it. I'm just going to loosely cut it out. And now I'm just going to cut inside the pencil line. Slightly inside the pencil line will allow me to then have a piece that's just a little bit smaller than the outside edge and that's exactly what I want and if you find that you still have a little bit of excess paper to trim off after once you have this adhered to the back of your cut file that's fine you can do that that's not a problem with your little scissors you can totally trim that up so here you can just see I have fussy cut inside that pencil line and now I'm just going to take the back of the cut file and add some liquid adhesive to it and then glue it down now I'm just taking a look at this to decide which side of the paper I want to use for the T and you'll just see me flipping it over here there is a really pretty floral on the other side both sides of this paper are gorgeous I love this simple stories safe travels collection is absolutely stunning so much fun and so here you can just see I'm using this Nuvo liquid adhesive I will just get a little bit on there not too much I don't want it to ooze out the edges so I'm just getting a little bit on there and then you'll just see me place that letter T over top of the fussy cut T there and I will have a little bit of excess paper to trim off at the top and it that's super easy to do you'll just see me take my scissors and trim off that excess and the T will all be finished and then I'll just use a variety of those other uh, safe travels collection papers to back the rest of the letters now this does not take much paper you will have tons of paper left over if you choose to use this technique for lots of other projects so there you can see travel is all backed I love that I think it's super pretty and now all of those different colors are in the ephemera die cut pieces all of the other bits that you got in your sampler so it'll all work together beautifully now I'm going to trim out a little piece of this dot paper for a flap for my project one of the things I really love to do in lay on layouts like this type of a layout is add lots of interactive elements as well just like you saw me do with the traveler's journal or the traveler's notebook I really like to add little interactive elements that people can flip and so on it just makes it interesting and it also allows you to add a little bit of hidden work to your project which is always fun I think I think it's always fun for the person looking at the album to look for those things and I've said this before in my process videos I always tell my kids that when you're looking at the projects in the future make sure that you check the back or the see if there's flaps or any of that sort of thing now I'm going to use a scallop punch from my stash to create a little more detail on this little piece of paper here by adding this scallop border it's just going to be a nice little addition here so you just see me uh, cut trim that out I do apologize for the weird lighting in this portion of the video the sun was kind of like back and forth uh, under the clouds here today and so it just kind of created a little bit of um, a situation with the lighting now I am going to use my bone folder to create a little bit of a crease on that paper and here you can just see that I will eventually fold that under and create a, the flap in that way so at first I wasn't sure if I wanted to leave that top little part exposed or fold it under I did decide I wanted to fold it under so there you can just see I folded it on that score line it's got that really nice little scallop edge but what I also wanted to do was add a little bit of vellum detail over top so I'm going to trim out a piece of vellum that's exactly the same size as that little flap and you'll just see me here using my trimmer to trim that out and I am going to take this down to my sewing machine and I will sew that little piece of vellum to the dot flap paper before I do that though I am going to scallop edge this vellum as well so that the edge of it matches the scallop edge of the dotted flap paper that I've already trimmed out and so you'll just see me again using that scallop punch to trim up that border edge on this vellum piece I love using vellum on my projects whenever possible and I just find that it just adds a little bit of extra 
layer and detail to your project that just looks really pretty and soft and classy, um, which I tend to really gravitate towards on my projects. So here you can just see my Misty is on my table now. I didn't want to just use a stamp block to stamp this because it's a little bit trickier with the uh, clear embossing ink. So you'll just see me using my anti-static powder tool on the vellum. The vellum paper is already in the Misty there. It's kind of hard to see that because it is kind of translucent. And I'm going to use some clear ink from Lawn Fawn to help me achieve my embossing. So I will just ink up the stamp that's on the door of the Misty there. I'm going to press that down onto the vellum and then I will use my Brutus Monroe gold embossing powder to create the gold embossing on the vellum. I think this is gonna be really pretty when it's finished. So I'll just get that all cleaned up and take my heat tool and melt the embossing powder. And that's just going to create the most beautiful gold embossing on the vellum. I love how this looks when it's all melted. So just gonna do that. And then it just creates this beautiful little vellum flap over top of the dotted flap and that is adhered onto that dotted flap by the stitching that I added. I'm going to start to stick my photos down. I'm not going to mat the photos or anything like that. I just didn't really think that they needed it with everything else I'm going to be adding. The small photo, the black and white two by two, I'm actually going to add to the page with a little bit of washi tape from Heidi's Art Walk collection. Um, the, the washi from Art Walk really matches nicely with the Safe Travels collection. So here you can just see, I'm going to um, adhere that like that, and then the photo will be able to flip. So then I'll be able to add some things underneath the photo as well. Now I'm going to add my cut file title to my page with some foam adhesive. I just wanted to pop it up and give it some dimension. So you'll just see me adding some three L foam squares to the back of this cut file piece. I will take the backing off of each of those little foam pieces and add that onto uh, my project. I do painstakingly use my T-square ruler to add that on to make sure that it is straight. And I believe that it is straight, so I'm happy about that. Now I am going to use my same Lawn Fawn double-sided tape here to stick the interactive flap down to my page. I'm going to just add that double-sided adhesive to the little scored and folded over piece that we added to the top of the flap. I'll just take that release paper off with my craft pick. And then I will just make sure that I get that onto my page straight using the other elements that are already stuck down to help me do that. So I think I use the edge of the photograph there on the right to help me um, line this up as well as the word travel. So you just see me making sure that I have that straight before I press down on that double-sided adhesive. Again, that double-sided adhesive, once it's stuck, it's permanent. So you wanna just really take the time to make sure that you have it straight. So I love that little flap. I love the vellum on there. I like that um, embossed sentiment that's on there. I think it's so fun. And now I'm just gonna start looking at the die cut pieces. I got a bunch of really fun die cut pieces from the Safe Travels collection from Simple Stories. And I'm going to just kind of audition a few little pieces. I think I use a backpack instead of that globe, but I did end up using that little bike at the bottom, which is super cute. And I wanted to stamp out this little banner on the yellow chevron paper or the gold chevron paper and just fussy cut that out. I am going to use that same Art Walk washi tape to tape this banner into place to the left of the other little flap that I have at the bottom. And that's just gonna bring a little bit more of that interactivity element and it's gonna bring a little more of that yellow down to the bottom. So it just kind of spreads out the colors a little bit. It adds a little bit more, like I said, that interactivity and some more texture to the entire project. Some of Underneath some of these flaps, I'm going to also add some stickers from the, the sticker sheet that I got from the Reaching Out collection, which does coordinate really nicely with the Safe Travels collection, very similar colors. So I love that. I'm gonna put another sticker underneath that dotted flap at the bottom. And I'm gonna start adding some of those stamps again from the Heidi Swap stamp set. Again, I'm gonna use the did this and that checklist just cause I think it's genius and it's such a fun way to add your journaling to the project. So 
going to add that to that area there. Now you can see I've added some of the journaling. I also added the stamp info at the very top. You can see I've added some journaling underneath some of the flaps and I've filled in at the bottom of the page the who, what, where. I just love this. I think it's so fun and there's so many photos that you can get on these pages and tons of storytelling that can happen on a page like this. So I am so happy with my sampler. As always, I had so much fun creating these projects. I hope you enjoyed watching me create these projects. This was a long video, so thank you for sticking with me right to the end. But you can just see, I actually used six photos on these two projects and did a ton of storytelling. So I'm super happy with that. Make sure you click check all of the links in the, the description box below. Make sure that you subscribe and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.